Hello, it's Sarah and Kirby. She's barking at something. Um, I have a couple things I wanted to share. I did paint a couple of ATCs. These we I did with Maya. I did this one. She did this one. I kind of tweaked it for her a little, but um, it's on the, the sticky back canvas, and I like the way they turned out. Uh, we just peel the back and then I stuck them to some file folder But I think when I do one again when I paint another one I'm going to just use um, a card with Gesso and I want to see how that turns out because this definitely has the texture of a canvas and I mean the Gesso is going to have a texture too, but I'm going to sand it. So they're super cute I just took the design from um this little calendar that I had. I cut these little angels out of this calendar and I used them. So here's the one I kind of used as inspiration and I just changed it a little bit. So they were fun. Maya and I did those. Then I was at Target. They had these little skulls in their... Oh, you can't see them. Hold on. Ooh. Uh, in the dollar spot there and they only had two so I bought them both and actually see how there's this like Wayne's coating little so I actually painted the other side and it has this printing down here but I just sanded this off I'll show you the one I did so um, I would have bought more because I think they're awesome and I love you'll see how it turned out but uh, I took this and then I just took this piece of uh, cardstock and I traced the design onto the cardstock which it fit perfectly which was awesome um, and then I just went to Google you know I love my Google and entered in sugar skulls and I just came up with a few different I just sketched this out and made a few put a few ideas down and then after I prepped the other one I actually just kind of using that as a reference I made this and I love how it turned out oh it fits just perfectly um, I really liked the flowers see here I have the cross I I don't know I just went with three flowers but I kind of think I might want to I might maybe put the cross here I have to play around but basically I just used this as a reference and I just used a pencil after I base coated it and sealed it and I painted this with um, buttermilk um, I just took my pencil and lightly marked on the paint just where I wanted to put things and then I just started picking colors and I did it and I think it turned out really cute I gave them some gold teeth I love the gold teeth and then I used um, pearlescent paint on the other teeth, the white pearl. Um, I didn't do, I mean there's so much you can do. I did dip dots with the back, just the back of my brush, the back end to make the dip dots in gold. So I just brought the gold up there. I didn't do too much other gold. I could have flecked it with gold, but I ended up putting the flex, the speckles on there with uh, burnt sienna. But I like it. I think it turned out, it was so fun. So, now that being said, when I was painting it, I struggled a little bit with my strokes. And I haven't painted strokes in a while. I mean, it's, you know, definitely not something that you do regularly unless it's a, a stroke work piece. You know, unless it's a, a piece that's done in that style. But I knew I wanted some strokes on here. And they're all in the purple, 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 purple. Um, I had a number four round that I wasn't thrilled with. This is the biggest round that I had. This is one of my American painters from a long time ago. So that's the one I used. And it didn't really come out very well. I wasn't thrilled with. I had to come back if I come in a little bit on the strokes like right where the points came I went back in with the with the buttermilk color to just make the points straighter and neater because they were like flaying a little bit like this one looks 
a little more like you can kind of see where I went back over it just to separate out the ends I just didn't like the way they finished and I mean I haven't done strokes in a while so it could just be me but um, I ended up going today to Michaels and I'm really happy with these I'm going to show you these are um, a brand they have called when it's by Windsor Newton they're Cotman sorry I just want to take these labels off and this is, it says designer. So I think this is not like your regular rounds. I think they're considered a little, it says designers. So from what I could tell when I was there looking, oh, that's all sticky. Um, the, the, it seemed longer than your traditional round. There were more bristles, which I liked. So, and I did try these out. So I'm going to show you that in a minute. But I also wanted to show you, um, I got two, I got a six and a four, and then I got another little, a number one liner, and <clears throat> I really need like a, a zero, but you can never have too many of these little detail brushes, because they get beat up so fast, but I really like having a brush that has a really, um, Del ouch delicate tip stab myself um okay the other thing i got was pink soap i went in to get this because well here's mine and i can't tell you how old this is but i've had it for a long time and what i noticed about this is it's more of a gel than i remember this being so i'm going to shake it but i'll just bring my um palette over here I want to see so basically what you do with this is it is it's more of a gel uh, it's a it's a brush conditioner oh, I just want to see if it has directions on it okay it says brush cleaner preserver and conditioner it cleans oils acrylics and watercolor paints contains a conditioner leaves no greasy after feel fill um, let's see if it has directions. No, that was it. But basically what I like to do, say you're at a convention or a class even, and you, you know, and you're packing up to go. So I'll just use my dirty water in my water bucket and I'll dress the brush with the pink soap. So basically just load your brush with the pink soap, pull it into it, and then pack this away and take it home with you just like that. So you don't have to have... You don't have to clean your brushes at at that time because the, what this will do it will stop any paint from um, drying in the bristles and you, when you get home you can just um, clean your brush the way you normally would um, with with basically I just use soap and um, dish soap and water um, but pink soap is I mean if I I could take this to the sink and just do the that exact thing so I'm gonna I want to just I'll just do this again just basically dress the brush with the soap and that's it um, but I, and then I would rinse it out when I'm completely done just leave it but you can leave it in there and it will it just conditions your bristles so I just want to show you how this works this this round I was very impressed with this what else did I get that's all I got was these and these weren't cheap brushes and you know um, those of you who watch know I, I ordered this set of it wasn't like a set but several brushes from artist club and i'm pretty happy with them i have to say like this actually see here's the number one and i just bought a number one and i mean it's holding up but this one does seem like it has a little more denseness it, it, it's a little thicker We'll see. We'll see how they go. I am rough on my brushes, so but these are holding up really well, and um, th for the price, they were really they were a pretty decent price. These were the big one was seven ninety nine, six ninety nine, and five ninety nine for a little number one. So not cheap. Um, and the pink soap. This is a big bottle, and it'll probably last forever was $8.99 I used a coupon that's what the coupon came off for that so this is huge though this is eight ounces this one was only four ounces and I've had it forever so I really would have bought a smaller bottle if they had it but they didn't have it and I was out oh the other thing about this is if you are painting and you get some paint on your clothes 
take a little pink soap and uh, rub it into the paint, rub it into it, and then just leave it. When you get home, you wash it and it'll come out of your clothes. So it's a great, it just keeps it loose. It doesn't let the paint uh, cure. So you can then wash it and um, you won't have painty clothes. Because I've had so many painty clothes, it's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> so alright, so let's put a little paint out and I'll show you what I was talking about. So this is why I wanted to get them. Because I'm going to paint, I'll paint the other one. I have another one of these. They only had two. Uh, or I would have bought more because I'd, I'd like to try. I don't know if I want to do the exact design. I think I want to totally change it up, even though I love this one. But I love putting strokes on a piece like this especially. It's just, they're very festive and flirty and fun. So, hey, a lot of Fs there. So I just take some water and you load your brush. You pull through that puddle and you load your brush. And there's a little bit of water in there. So let's, I'll show you what a stroke is. So basically, you, I'm much better at going this way than I am at this way, but you put your brush down, and then when you pick it up, it comes to a point. And that's what you want to see. And this seems to be doing a great job. Let the brush do the work. Don't try too hard. Just let it, you know. So I'm going to show you this way. I'm not the best at going this way. but For some reason, I can't get the bristles to open up as much when I go that way. There we go. But let the bristles do the work. See, that's what I kept getting on the when I was doing my sugar skull. It kept splitting at the bottom because I was using, um, I only had a, one number four, an old, much older number four round. Now, this is a number four, and it's much bigger, longer. See, that's why I'm saying there's something about this designer. This is probably just a straight number four round, and this is called number four designer. I don't know. It'd be nice if they called them all the same thing and then we would be able to know what we're dealing with here. But this is a number four and I'm still loading it like, you know, normal, like I just did. But you would just push down, pick up. And that's the thing. You want it to spread open at the top and make that nice rounded top, but then pick it up and make that nice tail on the end of it. Now see how nice I can, if I come all the way up. So that's what I was looking for on my piece here, but I, I had to fix it. I had to come back and fix it. The same thing with like tendrils. This is, I was really wanting, I'm going to try this little liner. I think I used my really tall, just to make these tendrils, they kept skipping and I mean they look fine from a distance, but it wasn't you know, I'm telling you, when you have a good brush, it makes all the difference. It really does. So I'm loading that up. And I just want to make a tendril. I lift it up a little there, but I mean, that's not bad. Definitely. You want to be able to like go on for a while. Wow. Now this is a waxy surface, so it's probably helping um, when you're on a painted surface, it might not slide as easily. And sometimes I just go like this, like just make a squiggle. But let's see if I can make a comma too. So you push down, pick up. Nice. So these are pretty, pretty good brushes. I'm not hating these. So hopefully we'll see how they hold up with me being so rough as I am. Um, okay, guys, I think that's it. Uh, I shared my sugar skull and my little ATCs and I think I'm going to come back and do a little ATC tutorial because um, I haven't done a painted one with you guys. I think I did. I did some mixed media. We'll see. Mm, I do watercolor and stuff, but this I'm just going to do painting in my style where, where we'll do shading and highlighting and all the good, good stuff, okay? Alright you guys, thanks for watching.